Hi everyone, welcome or welcome back to the channel. So today we are back in Trihackme and we are doing the Green Holt Fish Room uh, as part of the fishing modules and it is the last challenge in the module but um, obviously you've seen I have not done any of these previously but I've been taking the fishing or I did the fishing domain on the blue team level one course so I feel pretty confident in my abilities to to investigate this uh, this scenario. So without further ado let's get straight into it. A sales executive at Greenhold PLC received an email that he didn't expect to receive from a customer. He claims that the customer never uses generic greetings such as good day and didn't expect any amount of money to be transferred to his account. Two big red flags there. Um, the email also contains an attachment that he never requested. Mm, very suspicious. So he forwarded the email to the SOC department for further investigation. So we are tasked with investigating the email sample to determine if it is legitimate. So we are going to open our virtual machine in the split screen view for a second here. And we see, oh yeah, I forgot, whoops. I have this open already for, to make it easy. Um, I'm not sure why the size, there you go. Okay, cool. So just at first glance, we see we have um, some IP addresses. We have a return path. We have the received from, looks like it's redacted for some reason. Um, we have, I believe this is the body, the actual contents of the email, uh, perhaps, I don't know. Um, it's obviously encoded in something. So let's just scroll down to the bottom and see what, no, this is, sorry, this is the body. Uh, or sorry, this is the attachment right here. It's encoded with base 64 more than likely. That looks like it's a pretty big file as well, but we'll get to that. So... All right, first question, what is the email's timestamp? Um, the only date I'm seeing so thus far is, uh, oh, we have received, is that the same time? Uh, received from, no, this should be, I'm guessing is the latest time? No, this one, What well, I guess it doesn't matter. But, um, so month, day, and then year. And the time. All right, cool. So who is the email email from? So we have a received, we have a, where's the sender at? Oh, from, so the sender is Mr. James Jackson and he is sending from info at whatever, mutamarine, mutawamarine.com. And then interestingly enough, the reply to is different from the actual sender. So that can be indicative of you know, malicious activity. But anyways, the sender is this person here. So what is his email address? Um, again, not the reply to, but the from. What email address will receive a reply to this email? So the reply to being different than the sender is going to be a different email or a different answer. So this is the reply to, this is who the, e the reply to the email will actually go to. This is just the sender. So what is the originating IP? So as you saw before, there are several different IPs. We have this one received at 558. Um, this is just the mail servers uh, when they received the email, not when it got to the recipient. So we see a couple of email servers. Um, we're looking for the first, the, the least recent timestamp. So I'm seeing this down here from this host when it's DNS and it looks like it's stamped at, oh, sorry. Um, yeah, sorry, stamped at from host wins DNS stamped at June, tw June 10th, 2020 at 1 PM or 1 AM. Um, yeah, 1 a.m. because I'm guessing this is military time. And the rest of these are around five. So this must be the originating IP. So this right here. All right, so who is the owner of the originating IP? So let's do a who is dot domain tools. It is, will give us more information about the, the sender. I believe it does some reverse DNS as well, but um. 
So we have the org, the org name, uh, we have the address, city, all this information can re be returned from just an IP address, which is pretty cool. So we see that the org name here is Hostwinds LLC and the prompt is saying to not include the period in your answer. So that is correct. So what is the SPF record for the return path domain? All right, so we're gonna be using uh, MX Toolbox once again. And let's see, looking for the SPF record of the return path, right? So return path here, and then we have the, the domain. We don't want the whole thing. So we're gonna go MX Toolbox, um, or let's see, SPF Lookup. There it is. And the domain name, SPF Record Lookup. We're gonna let it, let it do its thing. And we have an SPF record here. Let's copy paste. Looks like that's the correct answer, cool. So now I guess we can do the same thing with DMARC. Let's copy and paste, go to DMARC. MX Toolbox is amazing, amazing tool um, for this type of work, for sure. So DMARC is this, I believe, yep, that's correct. So what is the name of the attachment? All right. So uh, let's just search for attachment. Um, and then here we have is the the real name. Seems pretty suspicious. Yep, that's correct. So what's the SHA-52, SHA-256 hash of the file attachment? So I know on Linux, or we're on Linux, so let's copy and paste this real quick. If I can get the whole thing here. You know, it'll probably be easier to just delete everything else than just trying to copy and paste that. So what, oh, I guess we can do that later. Let's Remove all of this from the top here. Oh my goodness. And this is, I'm being difficult. Like you don't have to do this at all. Uh, I just found out about this like last night and I thought it was pretty cool. I mean, I knew you could do it. I just never done it uh, before myself. So we're gonna copy and paste this entire thing, right? Oh my gosh, missing. All right, is this empty now? Nothing at the top, nothing at the bottom, just straight base 64 encoding. All right, so we're gonna copy that entire, entire string, entire encoding. Gonna open this terminal, make this a bit bigger. Uh, let's see. Come on, where are you at? Text appearance, custom font. Make a bold. All right, I guess that should be big enough. We can go a little more. All right. All right, so what do we have here? We have the email. Um, let's go ahead. We have this hash here from, from the email, the contents of the email. So this is the attachment of the email, but it's encoded as base 64. So it's just text pretty much. So um, what we can do, which is, I guess it's harder than just opening the email with Thunderbird, but we can we can make a file called base. You can name this whatever you want to, it doesn't really matter. Then we're going to actually open said file. We're gonna paste the contents, or I guess I could just use the other file so I'm, this is making more work than it has to be, honestly. Uh, but you just want that base, that, that encoding by itself. So we're gonna open the terminal again. Doing too much. All right. <laughs> so if we look at that, that file, right? We have that encoding, cool. And just the encoding, nothing else. So we're gonna do base 64. Tag D, which is for decoding, and then we're going to look at that base.txt. We're going to output that into um, attachment.zip. All right, cool. So now we have 
attachment.zip. Let's try to unzip. Um, I'm not sure if it's asking for the hash of, well, I guess it's the, um, I guess they're looking for the actual, the actual file, not the, not the zip file. So we're going to unzip this real quick to sudo unzip attachment. We can't unzip it like that. Um, let's just do it through the, through the file manager desktop. And we're going to extract here and I get this error for some reason. Uh, hopefully that this doesn't affect our, our findings. Oh, this is zero bytes. Nah, this is not right. So the one here is 483. I wonder why. Oh, maybe I should name it the, with the extension that was named in the email. So what was the name of the file? It was a dot cap file. So let's do that again, but we'll do a dot cap attachment dot cap. See what happens with that. Uh, and then we're going to do a uh, SHA-256 sum to get the sum of, what is it called? Attachment dot cap. So let's check and see if this is correct. Yep. That's correct. All right. Nice. So we're getting down to the, to the wire here. Let's look at that, that hash in virus total, uh, search, not a file. Post that hash there. And I mean, this thing lights up, like it's obviously something's going on malicious with this, uh, this dot cap file. Um, so the size, the file size here, we have 400.26 kilobytes. So that's the attachment size. Oops. And then what's the actual file extension of the attachment? Oh, it's a, it's a raw, rare RAR file. Hmm. Right. Yep. That's it. So interesting. All right, cool. So that was pretty informative. Um, it was good to go back over some of the things that I've been learning in the blue team level one course. And um, I'm going to continue making videos on like volatility. Um, what's it called? Case or um, the, not the disc imager, but the forensics gatherer tool. I forgot what it's called. Cape, cape. That's it. Um, a bunch of other stuff, but I won't get into it right now, but just look forward to more videos covering content from the blue team level one, but I'm applying the knowledge learned to rooms and try hack me, uh, just because there's so much content on here. But anyways, that's it for me. Hopefully you learned something. Um, if not, or if you did, please leave a like comment, subscribe, and we would definitely appreciate it. But outside of that, um, like I said, that's it. I hope you stay safe and have a good one. See ya.